Hey guys, I know there are plenty of reviews and videos about this, but I wanted to share my experience and why I think this is a deal too good to pass up, especially if you're looking to build a budget PC and still occasionally game. I'm talking about the AMD Ryzen 2400G APU. I didn't have very high expectations when I picked this up, but I was completely impressed by it. I bought this for my wife's new PC, her old one is showing its age, and she wanted something in a mini ITX case, and I thought this would be a perfect solution for her. On the CPU side, you have a 4-core, 8-thread Ryzen with a base clock of 3.6 and a boost of 3.9. The graphics are Vega 11 integrated with a stock frequency of 1250 MHz. The memory speed, of course, is tied to your system RAM, all out of 65 watt TDP. The best part is, you can pick this up for $139 and it comes with two free games. Instead of letting it sit on a shelf until I acquired the rest of the parts for a build, I decided to test it out on my PC. I removed my CPU and GPU, installed the APU, and I ran a couple stock benchmarks just to get a baseline. Since it was under liquid, I figured I might as well push it a bit and see what it can do also. It overclocked pretty easily to 4 GHz at only 1.4 volts, and uh, the GPU we were able to push up to 1600 uh, at the stock 1.2 volts. Uh, the RAM we pushed to 3266 CL14 with really tight timings, and I ran the benchmarks again, and even benchmarked a few games. At stock settings with the RAM at the default 2400, we got a fire strike score of 3047 with a physics score of 10101 and a graphic score of 3446. With the overclock, the score jumped up to 4252 with a physics score of 12466 and a graphic score of 4836. Unigen Heaven at stock settings, we got a score of 663 with an average FPS of 26.3. When we overclocked it, it went up to 923 with an average FPS of 36.6. Finally, we couldn't leave out Cinebench R15, and at stock, we got a score of 789, and overclocked, the score went up to 892. I also ran a few games on it, thinking it wouldn't be very impressive, but honestly, for what it is, it was very impressive. On Shadow of the Tomb Raider, on the first part of the game, uh, 1080p with medium and low settings, with no post-processing, we saw an average frame rate of 33.3 FPS with a 1% low of 23.8 and a 0.1% low of 16.5. Gameplay was quite good, very smooth, and definitely playable. Uh, I will show some screen capture of uh, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider a little bit later. Um, Rise of the Tomb Raider and the Flooded Archives at 1080p, also low and medium settings with no post-processing, uh, saw an average FPS of 41.9 with a 1% low of 29.7 and a 0.1% low of 23.5, also very playable. And I also decided to try Wreckfest really quick, which is another game I, I play a lot. And while not a very demanding game, I didn't really expect a consistency of the frame rate. Uh, I used the recommended settings, which were a mixture of high, medium, low, and at 1080p, the benchmark recorded an average of 56.3 FPS with a 1% low of 45.3 and a 0.1% low of 44. This is pretty much all the time I had for testing at the moment, and I thought it was done. But before I switched back to my 2700, I did play around with the RAM to see if there was any improvement. I raised the frequency to 3533 and had to loosen the timings, and the performance dropped. Even the uh, XMP profile at 3200 outperformed it. So it is true, you can get a lot out of these APUs just by overclocking, but you can get even more if you take some time to, you know, play around and set up your RAM as well. Uh, I did run a few more games before I swapped back to mine. Um, Battlefield Run 1, that ran amazing. Uh, World War Z, using Vulcan was ridiculous how well that ran. And honestly, the only thing it seemed to struggle with was the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark. So I'm not trying to claim that this is a perfect gaming setup. Obviously there will still be some things that will lag behind on, and I would love to find some time to do more testing, but on a budget, this would be a great alternative to having to purchase a separate CPU and GPU, or if you are only an occasional gamer, this might be something to consider. For the price, you sure can't beat it, and you can always have an upgrade path in the future. Um, anyways, look for more testing on this APU in the future. If I don't find a time to reinstall my PC, then I'll test it in the voice when that build is ready. Um, if you guys use uh, AMD APU or, if, or this particular APU, let me know what your experience with it is. So I think we'll let this video close out with some actual gameplay footage using this chip. And uh, also keep in mind that uh, the performance that you see is, is also while uh, recording everything with using Radeon Relive.
Son of a creepy bastard. Sneaky Zeke is close. Reloading! There's too many! Get to the elevator! The screamer. Eyes open. We gotta hide. Still more to do here. I'll be back this way. Mm, there's still more to do here. I'll be back this way. Hey, Sammy, how's it going? Gracias, your man. Uh, all this food is making my stomach rumble. Guess you should have eaten. <laughs> I was too excited. As usual. Okay, okay. I'm not really used to crowds. You'd rather storm guards or the deathless? <laughs> no, this is fine. Jonah, he's at the gate. OK. 
Okay, this should work. All right. This is Commander Rourke. I want the site secured ASAP. When Dr. Dominguez arrives, we all go in together. Hmm. <sighs> 